Welcome to the Triple Helix Robotics instructional video series, Building a West Coast Drive. In this episode, episode two, we're going to cut a drive rail to length. And the skills that we will be learning is how to use a tape measure properly, using a square and a fine point Sharpie to make marks, aligning the part to the saw on one side of the line so that you can cut it properly and operating a metal cutting chop saw safely. Let's get started. Okay, so when we make drive rails, it's important that both of the ends of the drive rail are really square, perfectly square. So we always wanna start off, even if, even if one of these ends looks like it's been cut off on the saw and that it's square, we, we wanna make sure so what we'll do is we'll take this over the, to the chop saw and we'll cut off a little bit of it to give ourselves a good edge to start from and then, and then we'll measure off of that, that one end. Before you cut anything on here, it's, it's important that the chop saw is completely clean. Right now it's got lots of bits and pieces of dust on it. So if you take this thing and you put it up on here now, those chips and shavings are going to get underneath your piece and behind your piece and in this corner and it's not going to let it set tight up against the fence and that'll lead to it sliding around and moving on you. It can also lead to it um, rocking back and forth or up or down while you're cutting and it'll, it'll mess up your cut. So the first thing you got to do is grab the brush and completely sweep, sweep off the saw. Safety stuff on this tool, um, number one, um, when it's up like this, you've got the guard that's in place that keeps that blade completely covered and it's fine. When you put the blade down, the guard moves out of the way and that's when it's dangerous. Um, so this, this tool is a tool that a lot of students are pretty nervous about because it's loud and it's scary, um, but it's pretty safe as long as you don't misuse it when you're cutting with this, the first thing is, is that your stock has to be flat on the table. It has to be nice and tight up against the fence. And when you're cutting it, you have to hold it there really firmly. Um, when this motor runs, it will vibrate. And if you're not holding on tight, your stock will tend to kind of wander back and forth on you a little bit. It's not hard to hold it in place, but you have to think about it. It's not just, you, you can't just put a hand on it and, hold, and just let, let the weight of your hand hold it. You have to, you have to push it into place. Um, you never want to have your hands um, any closer to the blade um, than about right here. Um, you can kind of see that there's this, this chamfer mark. I, I would be okay right here, but like this, no, that's, way, that's too close to the blade. Um, so usually when I'm holding on to something that's long, I'll hold on back here. Um, when this comes down, it's gonna cut, we have a metal cutting blade in this chop saw right now. Um, so it's able to cut through aluminum. As long as when you cut through it, you cut through it at a reasonable pace. Um, so you don't wanna jam it down, and down, down through because your, your blade will bind up and you're, and you're working the saw too hard. And you don't wanna go too slow either. So it's sort of a feel thing. After you've done it a few times, you kinda get a feel for how fast is, is a, the appropriate speed to go through with. But it takes a little bit of practice. We'll use some of this scrap as our test cutting, just to show you the technique. So, and not only do you, does, your, does your tool have to be clean, you want your part to be clean too, because chips can be on your, on your workpiece just as easily as they could be on the saw. Um, now, when you're cutting with this, um, when you squeeze this trigger, it gives a tiny little bit of a kick, so you wanna be ready for it. Um, and so the way that we cut is we position the, the part on the saw first, then you squeeze the handle, and then you stroke it all the way down through the piece, all the way down to the bottom, and then you let go of the trigger and you wait for the blade to come to a complete stop. Then you lift it up and away. Um, the reason for that is, is if that blade is still spinning when you lift it up, those teeth will brush along the surface of the part and sometimes it'll knock it out of square. Um, we found just over time experience that if you just take the chop and then stop it, then the, the parts will come out square. Um, 
And so if we're just trimming something off that's just a, a raw, we're just cleaning up an end, we don't need to position it um, super precisely. Um, we'll work on positioning and cutting to a line next. But what this looks like, and what, what I like to do is, is I like to bring the, the saw down kind of close and start it here, just so that you're not pushing a running saw all the way down. So normally I would have it set, kind of lift it up like this, and then I'll squeeze. And then you can lift it up. One thing that we always do is, since this is so loud, um, it can startle people if they're not ready for it. So before we make the cut, you yell saw, so that everybody knows that you're gonna cut with it. Saw. Good. And you'll see that um, if you cut down nice and square, this piece that's here that's resting on the fence, it just kind of sits there. Um, what we've seen in the past is if you're cutting something at an angle, sometimes that, that piece that comes off, it's shaped like a wedge. And it, if it got pulled back in here, it would act like a wedge and it would get caught between the fence and the blade and it, and it can, it goes bang and then it'll break teeth off the blade. So we sort of established policy on the team that we only make square cuts with this. If we want to make miter cuts, we cut on a bandsaw. Saw. Mm -hmm. Nice. And that was a good speed. Now, if we want to cut to a certain length, we need to we need to align to cut to. And this is kind of important because this is one of the, the common mistakes that I see people taking shortcuts on. But what you want is when, when you bring this down, you're gonna position this blade with respect to, you're gonna put, position the part underneath the blade to match up so the sawtooth lines up with the, the mark that you're gonna make. That means that that mark that you make has to be in the right place and it also has to be super thin so that you know that you're hitting your mark properly. If you use a big fat marker to make that mark, which I see a lot of people do, um, you end up with this big wide line, and if you're trying to hold a tight tolerance on your length, and you've got an eighth inch wide marker mark on here, there's no way that you can hit it. So we always use fine point Sharpie markers to make our marks, and that stuff should be in this measuring and marking drawer. So now we've got a good edge over here, and we wanna, we wanna say, let's, let's say we want a 12 and a half inch wide piece. Um, if and this is something you guys probably don't know, if you just use the tape measure and put it on here and make the mark in the right spot, tape measures, this hook that's on a tape measure isn't riveted on here stiffly. See how this can move back and forth? And the reason for that is in carpentry, a lot of times you wanna measure things lengthwise and you also wanna make inside measurements. So you push it up against some, the inside of a joist or a two before or something, so you can measure inside stuff. That's why this thing is designed to move back and forth the thickness of this blade. But because it can do that, and this thing is just riveted on, the precision of the location on the inside of a tape measure hook is not precise. So if you want a super precise length of a part, so in this case, we said we were gonna have a 12 and a half inch long part. What you need to do is take this tape measure and line up the one inch mark on the end of your part like that. And then you can come over and make, make your mark. Can you hold this straight? Oh wait, there we go. Yeah, can you hold it straight for me? So now we can push this down and we're gonna make our, our mark right there lined up with that line. And then you can use your square to transfer that line up to the front edge of the part where the blade touches it when you bring the blade down. You don't actually need to have a line all the way across your part like that because once you set the blade on here and you get it set in the right position and you hold it, it's gonna stay there anyway. 
but it doesn't really hurt anything to have that on there. After a while, after you, after you get used to it, when you make your initial tick mark, you'll start putting that initial tick mark in the right spot on the part so that you don't have to draw a line. So now, if this is our part, we always, you make your tick mark, you draw your line, you get in the right spot, and you always put an X on the part on the waist side of the cut because that saw blade has thickness to it and it's gonna cut on one or the other side of that line and you don't wanna, if you want your part to be this wide, you don't wanna put your blade on the wrong side and cut away some of your, some of your length. So we'll take this, we come back over to the saw and to, 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 to decide where you want this, you'll bring the blade down. You wanna make sure that your hand is not inside that grip where the trigger is, because you don't wanna be unsafe. And we'll set, we'll set this tooth right, the, the, the left side of the tooth right against the side of the line. And you can get that, uh, see if you can get that from the, maybe the other side of the saw. Can you see that from over here? So we're bringing the saw down and the left side of the tooth is right on that line. When we're in the right spot, you gotta hold it, make sure it doesn't wander on you. Saw. And then we'll see how we did. So we'll check it with the tape measure. So we set that on that end. We come over here and it is just a hair long, just a hair long. Actually, if I get this perfectly positioned on that side and on this side, it's really not too bad. It's really not too bad. Within the precision of this tool, that's probably about as good as we're gonna get. Yeah, that's real good. Good. So that's how we hit a mark. So that's what we need to do on our drive rail is we need to be able to hit that mark exactly. And that's important on the drive rail because if it's too long or it's too short, then that's gonna throw off the position of the mounting holes that are on it. Because we measure, we, we have a jig that comes off of the end of that part and you, you drill holes manually using that jig on the inside. And you flip it around and you put it on the other end and you come in from this side. So if, they're, if, if your length is off, then those holes are gonna be either too close together or too, or too separated from each other. Okay, you ready to do it for real? Yeah. Okay, let's cut it to, uh, remember how we said we were, gonna, we were gonna start with a good edge? Let's start with a, our first good cut will be in the center, and let's cut this thing about, let's say half an inch longer than it, what it needs to be, and that'll be your good cut, and then you'll measure from that end to get your final cut on the other side. How's that sound? Yeah. Okay. So it's still 27? I would say like mark it at 27 and a half or 27 and three quarters or something. Good. That's it. Yep, perfect. And if you have a marker that's working right and it's not dirty, just drawing a single line is enough. Um, you don't need to go back and forth on it. Okay, don't forget your X to show you which side of the blade you're gonna, or the line you're gonna cut on. Okay, good. Yep, that looks pretty good. Saw. Okay. Yeah, so now you're going to put your one inch line on there. And then you're going to mark on the 28 inch line because this is one. Okay, I got it for you. Okay, good. Okay. All right, Sigurd, so stand on that side this time, and, and so, in, so you see where he, he positions it. And make sure you hold on to that thing tight so it, doesn't, so it doesn't move on you. Saw. 
Så. Very nice. Okay, let's check it. What do you think? Do you think you hit it? Mm, I look a little short. <laughs> And then it's always good to double check like after they cut stuff too. It's perfect. Nice job. Good one. Okay. So now this rail is ready for us to put our next set of holes into it. Great.